I don't know why, but lately the Flintstones, you know, the cartoon has been on my mind. And now I have the theme song stuck in my head. Maybe it's because I keep hearing about all these changes and thinking on retirement planning basics. So in this video today, I'm gonna talk about the old way of thinking and then introduce the new way of thinking about retirement planning basics to ensure retirement readiness. By the end of this video, I will give you the facts so that you have a better understanding of what you need to do to ensure that you are ready for retirement. Hi, my name is Darlene Hartman. I'm a CPA and founder of D Hartman Consulting, LLC. For the best retirement annuity advice, subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit that notification bell so that you can receive notices anytime I post a new video. After graduating college, I went to work for an international accounting firm where I became an expert in auditing 401k plans. I was told to max out my 401k, which I did for several years. But maxing out, what they meant was to put the full amount that the IRS allows, which is currently $19,500 a year, in addition to another $6,500 if you're age 50 or older. So I'm not talking about maxing out the employer contribution. Well, now I know that that 401k is probably not worth as nearly as much as I thought it was going to be worth due to the possibility of increased tax rates starting as early as 2022. So just as a reminder on a qualified plan, the contributions you pay no tax, it grows tax deferred. But what that means is when you start withdrawing money, it's 100% taxable. Also to note, our national debt as of October 2020 is slightly higher than it was at the end of World War II. And do you know what happened after the end of World War II? Tax rates went up to 94% for high income earners. And that tax rate did not drop below 70% until the 1980s. Sounds kind of scary, doesn't it? Requires a lot of uh, tax planning these days. Well, the new way of thinking about retirement planning basics is to only put in as much as your employer match into your 401k because it's free money. Why wouldn't you? So just to give you an example, if your employer says that they'll match up to 50% of 6%, then you will invest 6% in your 401k in order to get that 3% match. So as I mentioned before, there's going to be some tax planning involved because you do want some money in taxable accounts in order to take advantage of deductions that the IRS allows you each year. Will the 60-40 split between equities and debt provide you the type of return that you need in order to retire when you want to retire and ensure that you don't outlive your money in retirement? Well, I did a whole video on this and it's titled, is the 60-40 split old news? To summarize, bonds are not buffering the risk in your retirement portfolio because we're in a historically low interest rate environment. So in other words, if you have 60% equities in your retirement portfolio, your risk exposure has actually increased 25%. Also, bonds are not generating the type of returns that they have in the past and you're definitely not getting a lot of interest income from those bonds to provide you retirement income. So what's the answer? Well, according to David Lau, who's the founder of DPL Financial, he noted that in a recent research study that he did, you need 96% equities in your retirement portfolio in order to generate a 7.5% return. That's a lot of risk. And if you can't stomach that much risk in your retirement portfolio, that's not the answer. And what if you're quickly approaching retirement? I would hate for you to be invested in 96% equities, especially in this huge stock market bubble that we're dealing with in 2021. Because what if it burst right at the time that you thought you were gonna start retirement? Just a note, what they're saying now, the average return on retirement portfolio is 60% equities, 40% debt, has actually been reduced from 7.5% to 4.2%. So what's the answer? Well, it's definitely not putting 96% of your retirement portfolio in equities. 
But what if you replaced a portion of your bonds and put it into contractual guarantees? So I've actually shown you in a previous video how productive contractual guarantees can be in your retirement portfolio that consist of equities and debt. Leave me a comment in the section below and let me know which tips you learned out of college about retirement planning that you still incorporate in your retirement planning strategies. Also, if you're enjoying this video, be sure to give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and hit that notification bell so that you can receive notices anytime I post a new video. So for the next one, I always think about the song from the Bare Naked Ladies. <laughs> yeah, I may be aging myself here. If I had a million dollars, now granted they weren't talking about a million dollars in retirement savings, they were gonna spend it on other things. But I was always told that if I had a million dollars saved up for my retirement, that I couldn't outlive my money. Well, out with the old, in with the new. So is a million dollars enough in assets to ensure that you can't outlive your money? Well, I don't know. I don't have an answer to that, but let's see. So there's inflation risks. So I know we're in a deflationary period, but yep, inflation is coming. There's sequence of return risks where if you have negative returns and you're withdrawing money from your retirement portfolio, you're gonna take a huge hit. It doesn't matter how much you have saved up. Withdrawal rate risk. So the safe withdrawal rate was established in 1994 at 4%, recently been dropped to 2.8%. So can you live off of 2.8% of your assets? There's long-term care risks, which they just recently updated those estimates of how much you need for long-term care. And it went from about 260,000 up to about 300,000. And then there's market rate risk. There's longevity risk. And I've already talked about the big bomb, tax risk. But what if it doesn't need to be about a number and how much assets you have? What if you had contractual guarantees in your retirement portfolio? Maybe enough to cover your basic living expenses. If you had enough contractual guarantees, you would be able to shrug off those market downturns and definitely not lose any sleep and not have to worry about timing for your retirement. Now let's go back to those pre-tax qualified plans that I talked about earlier that were formed by the federal government. So what was the justification for those plans? Well, the justification was the fact that a retiree was expected to make less income in retirement, therefore be at a lower tax bracket, in addition to probably having less living expenses in retirement than pre-retirement. Well, that expectation has not become a reality as retirees are making more income than anticipated and their retirement expenses are about the same as their pre-retirement expenses. And let's not forget about those future tax increases that we're expecting, maybe as early as 2022. So if those tax rates go up above 40%, I don't think anyone's gonna be happy about it, especially retirees. But what is the answer? So that would be pay the taxes now and hopefully never have to pay taxes on that money again. Is there such a thing? Well, absolutely. There are tax advantaged investments and some can provide you contractual guarantees while others cannot. And I will address that in future videos. If you're interested in leaving those prehistoric views on retirement planning behind and incorporating new concepts in retirement planning to ensure you financial security, certainty and happiness in your retirement, be sure to click the link below to apply to become my client. Also, if you're enjoying this video, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Give me a thumbs up and share it with your family and friends. Thank you for watching. Let's get the conversation started on how you can live your best retirement while not outliving your money.